And we're live. Uh, Victor Odo is joining me today. And Victor, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, Ivy, so as we were just kind of talking before we started, you know, I've been watching a lot of your stuff lately and you just, I mean, you have a very, a very wide array of content that you put out uh, on uh, on YouTube and you have some courses and meditations that you give away and everything like that. And um, for those who are unfamiliar with your work, um, would you take a moment to just sort of like introduce yourself, kind of like what is like, what are you about and what is your content about? Sure, sure. Thank you. So, yeah, so I would say it's been a while now, but like 12 or 13 years ago, I had what's known as a spontaneous kundalini awakening. Are you familiar with that? It sounds kind of similar to mine, but uh, but a little yeah, really yeah. please. Okay, continue. so it's 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 like a basically like you're thrust in to an intense mystical sort of samadhi type experience, but at the time I wasn't ready for it. I was it was uh, I I had just ingested some psychedelic mushrooms, and and I had been I'm familiar with those, so it's it's always very somewhat predictable effects to, to an extent. But during this particular session, um, I had what I later came to find out was a kundalini awakening and essentially what that was was i found myself feeling this extremely like dense ball of energy randomly starting to make its way up my spine and then it kind of got into my head and exploded into a white light and i went into an ego death um but uh that you could have said okay well you were tripping out vic you know no big deal but that same phenomenon of powerful energy rising up my spine causing these like almost like psychedelic types of visions started to happen to me in my waking consciousness you know days afterwards and it would just happen randomly and sometimes the energy was so powerful that i thought i was going to die it was it was just so strong and there was also a lot of other sort of issues that came along with that like extreme fatigue hypersensitivity depression anxiety uh, all these like old memories started flooding my mind and it was like i was going through what people call the dark night of the soul in a very intense way but i had no idea what the heck was happening to me i wasn't i didn't sign up for it and at the time i i like freaked out and I, I went to the doctors and they wanted to put me on medication. So the, the point I'm getting to, Jordan, is that I had no guidance. I had no idea what the heck was going on with me. And I eventually settled down and became somewhat normal. No, just kidding. Um, but eventually, uh, you know, it, 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 it proved itself to be a spiritual awakening. And the spiritual awakening has blessed my life in so many ways. But for many years, I struggled because there was no... There was, there, was, there was like no source of guidance. So my YouTube channel, long story short, is basically me talking to my younger self. People who are going through this, uh, an awakening, but don't know where to turn, don't know what's happening to them, don't feel comfortable trusting their intuition even though it's coming on strongly for them. So it's a source of guidance for people going through an awakening, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, no, I, I, that's what I was, I was noticing when I went um, really like into your material and I was just sort of like letting a playlist, a couple playlists run and everything. And you really talk a lot about like ascension symptoms and like how to deal with what you're going through. And I thought some of them were, you know, some of them were really on point with some of the things that I went through. And uh, some of them seemed like things that almost everybody could really relate with, even just ascension symptoms being like, you know, you're, you're kind of going through waves of tiredness and stuff like that. And I want to ask you, like, how much do you feel is the, is actually like the, you know, this collective awakening versus just normal things that humans have always been going through. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the way I look at it is out there as it might sound. I feel like the planet is going through a transformation. And as some people would label it, the vibration is increasing. And I think this higher frequency energy is causing a lot of people to go through spiritual awakenings where it's always happened in the past. But now I think it's more frequent and perhaps even more accelerated. That, so that's just my observation. Of course, it's speculation, but that's the way I, I look at it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you talked a lot about, um, at least in, in one or two videos I saw you, like were mentioning like the Schumann resonance and how we're all very like connected to the earth's frequencies in that regard and uh, what's happening. So, I mean, what do you think this is all going to look like, you know, in, in, in five, 10, 15 years down the road? I would say in spite of how things look now, which, which I personally view as like a collective dark night of the soul, um, and so in spite of things looking very precarious right now for, for people and humanity and the, the, the planet, I see things looking very great. And I imagine you've gone through it, Jordan. You've gone through probably the, the dark night, the, the challenging times, the, you know, just the, the difficult 
experiences of healing and release that give way eventually to more of yourself, more clarity, more peace, more happiness, more, more like uh, where your more your authentic self can just shine through more easily. And I can see that sort of happening on a more of like a macrocosmic scale with the planet. I feel like the planet right now, it, its people are going through their dark night right now and it's ugly, but I can see it giving way just as it has for me and I would assume you to a, a better life, a, a better existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's really what everyone's like. I mean, I think deep down what at least most people would say that they're, they'd want or striving for. I guess it's, a, do, you, do you ever find it's a bit of a challenge in, you know, it's like, I, well, I love, by the way, that you said that you were, you know, speaking to um, like your younger self with your videos. I recently put out a video that was very similar, like a letter to my past, to, to my past self. And I'm wondering, like, you know, when, when people are coming and they're watching and they're leaving comments and, and everything like that, do, do you ever feel like, you know, people are, you know, they're, they're maybe receiving it at this level, like they could go so much deeper, but maybe there's a bit of a gap there. And like, I guess, I mean, do you have like a solution for that? Or like, what do you think about just how to reach people in like in, in the most impactful way? Because a lot of people will talk about, you know, wanting to create a change, but actually doing it is another thing entirely. Yeah, that that's a tough one, Jordan. It really is. Um, I, I I would suspect a lot of people watch a video like mine or read some of the articles on on your page and get all psyched up, and then they go on to the next article and the next YouTube video, and it's like this thing. So I think that comes down to the person. I feel like we're doing our job by putting our creative energy out there, and then it's like it's really for me. That's where my obligation sort of ends. I, I I'm just gonna be myself. I'm gonna put my message out there, whatever inspirations want to come through i'll do it as best as i can but then what people do is on is on them um i hope for people to kind of you know empower themselves and, and take life into their hands as we both know they all could but uh it's uh it's tough to make, get people to do something so i don't know is if that answered your question exactly you can clarify if if uh i sort of missed it <laughs> no 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 i'm i it's it's definitely hitting that point i mean yeah, I, that this is a, a continual thing that I've been even looking at and working with, you know, just with spirit science and everything is, you know, like there's a lot of videos and a lot of views, um, but actually bringing like, I guess, inviting people to really do the work, you know, it's like everyone's kind of on their own path and, and making their choices. And some people it's like a, more of a, a surface level interest and some people are deeper. But I think you're right, like in the sense that, you know, it's like as long as you keep showing up for them or we keep showing you know like people who are in a creative position you know putting the content out on the internet the, if the intention is to create support then other people like people who are watching and, and just kind of you know maybe tuning in can get that invitation to go deeper and deeper and that sort of thing um until they hit that point themselves with the dark night of the soul and really being you know facing themselves so I mean, I, I, I'm certain that like a lot of people probably listening to this are already familiar with the concept, but I, how would you explain Dark, Dark Night of the Soul? The way I look at it, it's, uh, it's like a spiritual rite of passage when you get to a point where on a soul level, you're ready to go through the rest of your life at, at a higher state of consciousness. But consequently, for that to happen, a lot of the old unresolved issues and like the, those subconscious uh, blocks and just your traumas from the past that are still with you energetically and emotionally, but you maybe haven't looked at them in a while, all of that in a very short span of time at a quick rate comes up to the surface. And not only does it sort of flood you emotionally and physically, but like those energies as they're working their way out of your system can seem to play out metaphorically in the way your life is transpiring. So not only are you going through anguish internally, but you're also going through stressful, random problems and complications. And, and during the dark night, life can seem pretty bleak, but it's all just, from my perspective, a, a temporary cleansing. And, and once these emotions are sort of healed and your traumas are released, then the, the life situations tend to kind of resolve themselves rather quickly and sometimes in an interesting sort of synchronistic way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I mean, w what would you say is like the most, or in your experience at the very least, what, what, what is the most um, impactful or best way to deal with that dark night experience when you're going through it? Like when everything seems so bleak, you know, like I, I have my own 
experiences of that. We can talk about that soon. But I'd, I'd love to hear, yeah, just like how do you deal with that? What, what do you, you know, tell people besides, of course, watching? Yeah, you have a lot of videos that probably cover this as well. But like, like in a nutshell, you know, what would you say is like the bulleted list of like you're going through some shit, do this, do this, do this, you know, or, or, or feel into this sort of thing? Sure, sure. So my experience, not only with myself, but working with people, I found the most important thing is to take responsibility for everything, everything you're feeling, everything going on in your life. It's like, that's your, that's you, that's a projection. Um, and I, what can prolong the dark night of the soul is the victim mentality. Like, why is this happening to me? And then it's like, life is trying to show you some lessons so you can heal and move on. But until you are willing to really take ownership of what's going on in your life, what's going on in your emotions, it's going to just be more and more and more of that unpleasantness you don't want. So just the self-responsibility. And I, I say that with sympathy because I know it's not easy. I'm not saying I don't get ticked off and, and go into like my victim moods once in a while either. But whenever there's a problem in my life, I try to look at it like, why did I create that? And when I ask that question, I get the answer. It's not instantly, but I'll like life will show me. It'll, it'll like it's like that's what it was trying to do: get my attention, to get me to look inside. And once I start to kind of glean the lessons life is trying to show me, then there's no need for all the challenges in my life. They kind of tend to subside. So asking why is this happening and taking ownership, and just facing those emotions that you don't want to face, basically, is really like it's like. A lot of times when maybe a past trauma, for example, is coming up so you can finally heal from it and let it go, it'll start playing out in your life and nagging you and, and sort of like um, yeah, playing out in like circumstances in your life. Um, but, uh, but, but once you, if you can just look at the emotion right away and, and not need life to get so intense for you, then you can move through these healing cycles rather quickly. So that's, I sort of lost, someone was at my door, it threw me off for a second, but I lost my train of thought there. But it was that so, sort of satisfy the question a little bit? Yeah, no, and I mean, you were talking about responsibility. I, I really appreciate you bringing that to the table too, because um, this is one thing that I've often kind of spoken to is I felt like taking responsibility, not just for myself, but for the whole world and the state of the world, even if I didn't necessarily, you know, pollute the oceans or you know whatever it is like what you know it's whatever horrible thing that you know we're going through like i didn't personally cause the bp oil spill or whatever. um but like the you know the the idea or of if i make it my responsibility then i can really do something about it whereas if i say oh you know coronavirus is some china's fault or people in a lab's fault or you know bill gates or you know there's all these conspiracies if i say you know if i if i take any world problem and make it someone else's fault, then they're responsible in my consciousness and my experience. And I'm abdicated from having to do anything about it. But if I say, no, I'm going to be just responsible for everything. Suddenly I'm like empowering myself to do something about it. So I was curious to hear your thoughts on that too. Of like, do you feel the same way? And, and do you have, you know, not just in like taking responsibility for yourself in your own life, but also kind of taking responsibility even for like the level of global consciousness. Does that empower you as well? Or do you share any of the same thoughts on that? Yes, yes. I look at it like this. Like right now in this moment, there's probably millions of people freaking out about the news, getting themselves all worked up into a frenzy, in panic mode. Oh my goodness, what's happening? And then simultaneously, here we are. We're having a nice sort of relaxed conversation, talking about spirituality. So the way I look at it is like, there's a lot of different things going on in the world. Um, and if there's something really troubling you, that's a part of that world. Um, if you're aligned with it, if you're experiencing it, that there is something within you sort of correlating to that experience. Um, so do I, I don't know if I would say I take, yeah, the way I look at it is like when I take responsibility for myself, then, and, I, and I'm on a path of growth and expansion, then I tend to avoid a lot of the more like, intense and challenging circumstances that a lot of people end up experiencing. So yes, if something happens to me that's like uh, external, I still will own that as well. Mm, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm curious as well, like, you know, just kind of keeping on the subject too of like the dark night of the soul and like dealing with it in that regard. Um, you initially said that, you know, your, your kind of your awakening experience happened with uh, some psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, something that I'm also very much uh, a proponent for. Um, and I want to ask you, like, do you ever, do, do you also um, recognize or like practice using plant medicine in that way of uh, like, you know, for 
working with Dark Knight of the Soul, working through things like that? Or do you think that's like, I mean, that's a recipe for a bad trip? No, I, I really believe they're not meant for everybody. Um, but I personally benefit immensely from them. And I've, I've taken ayahuasca multiple times. My wife is actually apprenticing to be a, an ayahuasca shaman. And I still enjoy uh, psychedelic mushrooms as well. Um, they just seem to me an extremely valuable tool that can greatly accelerate the the dark way the dark, like sort of the dark night of this whole processes. It, you can have at least me. I've had more epiphanies and release and healings in like a couple of hours span than might have taken me six months of life slowly showing me these these lessons. So it's a way of accelerating it, but it is intense and it can be it can be. It can be, I can see where some people would not want to go through that because it sometimes can be challenging to look at so many dark aspects of yourself you've been hiding so quickly, you know. But also I found that the plants seem to also have sort of a spirit and a consciousness in it of themselves that seem like they're benevolent, wise teachers. That's the way I, I view them or at least experience them. So they've, they've enriched my life in, in so many ways. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan, but I'm a bit, maybe I'm a bit biased, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, like you're you're... Speaking of the choir, or preaching to the choir on that one, definitely, because um, I mean, 100%, just like the the amount of value and sort of transcendent realizations, the amount of like, if, if you will, psychotherapy that you can do in such a short amount of time, in addition to sometimes very supernatural experiences are just kind of, you know, wild, you know, just like, like. I, yeah, it's like I healed this past trauma, I met some aliens all in a span of a couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> right, right. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, and, uh, I think that there's a big push on that, too, of, like, using, at the very least, legalizing it from the basis of, like, as a therapeutic tool. There seems to be, um, there seems to be some movements happening in BC, actually, like, not far from where I am. But, I mean, Colorado just decriminalized mushrooms. I mean, yes. that's, that's really huge. As far as, like, I guess the awakening consciousness of the world, that's probably a really big factor, wouldn't you say? I would say it. I can see. I, I I can see it just from where I'm looking. Go continuing in that sort of, um, lot like more open sort of direction where it seems like, th you know, I I can see in the future ayahuasca and mushrooms being legal in more places, similar to how cannabis was legalized when years ago we would have thought that was like never going to happen. Um, and I think yeah, I I can see it assisting big time because. You know, like 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 going back to my story, a lot of people they just don't know what to do with themselves. A lot of people don't even know they're going they're like they have a spiritual awakening kind of going on with them. And sometimes just one one session with like an experienced shaman or at least in a good setting that's conducive to growth and expansion, that can be literally life changing and for a person. So I, I look forward to and really hope to see more and more awareness um and more more openness and, and more people uh, going it going and utilizing these tools that have been here for you know thousands of years yeah no i definitely agree with that definitely agree so i mean that's all like <laughs> there's so many there's so many subjects here that like are just fascinating to me that i love to talk about whether it's you know plant medicine and uh healing and dark night and soul and releasing traumas and and all of this and collective consciousness and honestly i i'm, I'm kind of open like my feeling is where should we go from here? I mean, there's there is there any particular subject here that just like is like your bread and butter that you are just like so stoked to talk about? Yeah, I, I got one for you, Jordan. I bet I bet you you can relate too. It's about like finding your life purpose. So was there a time in your life where you felt like life was shifting around to sort of like there was a next step for you that life was asking you to take? But it's I don't know. For me, it was a very scary challenging things so is that something you've talked about before is like when life sort of says it's time to go like live your purpose yeah I, I've had that at multiple stages for, mm. for for myself I think the first really well yeah I guess okay so when I was like 11 if you don't mind like small backstory this is no fun. please yes yeah so when I was um, like 11 or 12 I just became very passionately interested in animation and I like dove full bore I just found myself like yeah, just completely diving into wanting to make cartoons all the time, be on the computer, like drawing. And, and I started with a flip book in the side of a dictionary, actually. And I did that telling stories all through until I was about 19 when I hit my this like kind of like what you described with your Kundalini awakening, this like profound spiritual awakening. Mine was induced by cannabis. 
Um, and it was like this explosion in my mind of seeing everything as unified and, and one and interconnected. And this was all very synchronistically aligned with like having met some people like weeks prior, if you know, if that, uh, who introduced me to like the secret and chakras and Reiki and that sort of thing. Um, so after that experience, I just, it was like my spiritual interest went through the roof and then that merged with my love of animation and created spirit science. And then that did, you know, it's like I kind of went on that path for another nine years or so um, until last year when an ayahuasca journey invited me really to make spirit mysteries, like this kind of online mystery school. And it was like, all right, it's time to level up. It's time to step into a higher level now. And so it's kind of been this progression, actually, like learn animation, and then here's what you do with it, and then here's how you bring people together with that. And it's, yeah, it's been very, it's, it's been a wild journey. So I, I would definitely say yes, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same with me. It's been, it's been like a, a few different times in my life where like things shifted gear, like on a dime in a big way. Like for the first time for me, um, I would say about like back in 2015, at that time in my life, I was a cannabis grower. I was like a medical marijuana grower. And I also owned a personal training gym. They were like my vocations, my businesses. And I had like this desire to be on YouTube, even though I wouldn't really, I didn't know how that was going to look, but eventually that desire became so like such a, it became such an intense yearning. Like I just knew inside, I have to do this YouTube thing. So I started making videos and then I felt like a, just such a strong intuition to basically burn my bridges. So I closed down my gym. I, I killed my mer medical marijuana grow plants, which was very hard for me because those were my last sources of income. And uh, I had, I had three kids. So I have three kids at the, at the time. I have a family to raise, but like spirit or my intuition was so strongly saying it's time to move on to this new thing. And it was so scary, and it involved such a drastic change. But but I, the YouTube videos caught on, and that led to like a coaching business, and I was able to support myself. And just my life today is so different than it was many years ago. But when during that transition was so challenging. But then yeah, now recently it, I've been sort of inspired to stop making YouTube videos for the most part, and then writing books. So it's like a whole new like whole new endeavor there. But, but yeah, that's, I just know a lot of people that watch me going back to your question, like what is my bread and butter? A lot of people I think find my videos when they're ready to sort of like start living this next level of their life purpose. But it's a lot of them are so, so immersed in, in a circumstance, like a career relationship that they're like, can I really, is this, is this crazy? I'm thinking these things. It seems so far fetched, but, but I, I like to be there to say it's okay. I, I've been through that type of transition and it can be scary but you learn a lot about yourself along the way. You grow immensely and then your, your life gets to kind of upgrade itself and there's like a deeper, deeper level of like satisfaction. Just like you, probably when you started making those videos, you probably felt like, you just probably really loved making them, right? You just felt so happy and like time would stand still and it's just you and the videos and the creation. And that's, that's, that's like the potential for people like living their purpose. They can like, they can really live a life of an incredible degree of satisfaction. They don't have to settle for you know what society told them they need to be doing so yeah definitely well and like the, the i guess this time right now especially with the you know global quarantine and covid and everything it's like the way that i've heard you know this conversation i think i i might have even said this in a video or whatever is like this is really a powerful opportunity isn't it um for just a massive transformation if we want it and it's like it, you can you can spend this whole quarantine you know inside watching tv playing video games, eating, if that's what you want to do. Or you could take that exact same amount of time and direct your focus into kind of like what you're describing, right? Of like, just like find yourself, you know, like explore what's really going on inside of you. What do you really want to be doing? Learn something new and apply it into, the, into your life and, and see the change happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It, there's, it reminds me of when I was like really a lot younger. I was like 19. And at that time I was working, this is kind of going back into history. I was working as a personal trainer. And then all of a sudden I came in one day and the boss is like, oh, we're, we're closing down tomorrow. You, you have no job. Real quick, very abrupt like that. And all the other trainers, they were all like, oh man, you know, they were ticked off and whatnot. And I thought, huh, what could I... And I decided, why not take all the clients' information down? So I called them up and I started going to their homes and I started, I was making more money. I had more freedom. So that, as an example of like, there's always opportunity in breakdown. And I agree with you, Jordan. Like a lot of people, yeah, they're probably chilling out, watching Netflix as we speak, sort of killing the time. But 
and that, and that's okay. No judgment, but but in these types of this unique circumstance, a lot of people could sort of up level themselves and and, and like like find the the hidden blessings and opportunities and really make a pot like result in a very positive change from this sort of seemingly dire circumstance. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I mean, let's actually, let's talk about spiritual business for a moment too, because this is something that uh, we, I've been really exploring and, and doing a lot of work on lately. And like a, we, we made a spirit science money series and I found at least for the spirit science audience, there, there was a very big divide in terms of like people accepting that the conversation in general about spirituality and money as a you know as a thing um and you know people who were willing to embrace it and people who weren't and, and everything like that but you seem like you've been on this path for a long time and you've established some spiritual business you have this youtube thing and and, and the courses i mean and everything that you do and i mean like i mean what do you do you ever have i guess first and foremost my, i'm wondering do you, do you ever have that challenge with your audience if you're you know creating an offering or are you kind of free of that with your with your community yeah, I, I went through it a lot, and you're right. There's it, it can be kind of a polarizing topic, um, and I went through a lot within myself. I, I even had as I started to try to uh, to charge money for things I was offering for energy I was putting out. Um, I had a lot of inner conflicts and blocks I had to deal with. Um, so, but uh, the way I I eventually saw this YouTube video, and this other person was talking about this topic. Her name is Melanie Beckler, and she was talking about um, how like you know a long time ago that the shaman of the tribe was supported by its people. They were given a shelter, people brought them food. So the spiritual advisor, if you will, was sort of didn't have to work, didn't have to charge money because they hooked him up. But that's not how it is anymore. We live in the real world. No one's going to be bringing you food and, and giving you a house. So it's like if we are to really do our work the, the, in the best way possible, it only makes sense that we would be reciprocated. Otherwise, for one, the the quality, like imagine if you had to work a nine to five job and you get home and you're exhausted, your spirit science videos, they would suffer. They would not have not have your full capacity in them. Um, but when you can really dedicate yourself to it, you can create a win win. Like like the things I, I do coaching and retreats and they, they help they transform people's lives. Yeah, they help me pay my bills, but it, it requires a lot of my energy, a lot of my time away from my family. So it's a sacrifice for me that would be very imbalanced to do completely for free it would just it would just it would not it would not really work um so i think the spiritual based business if you can kind of get over some of the blocks it can produce a win-win um where you really you 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 create from a from a heart-centered place but also you maintain um you also don't neglect yourself along the way. You also pay yourself and allow yourself to be reciprocated for all the energy and time and focus and dedication and discipline you're, you're exerting out there. So, um, and when, when I've learned when I can do that, it's like I can help a lot of people. I can, I can have abundance and I can be happy and it's, it's a win-win. Um, so that's been my experience anyway. How about you? Do you, do you, are you, do you have challenges when you, when you mention like a new course or something? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of still figuring it out and learning and growing because the you know the model here isn't just that I'm sustaining myself. It's like a whole animation team now, and like you know, there's 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 coaches inside of our spirit mysteries thing. So um, it's just like kind of yes, I guess I don't know, to, to answer your question is like um, for for years and years, and I think I I put this into their our spirit science money episode is that. There were a lot of people, also I don't know if there's a lot of background sounds, but it's really raining down hard right now. I'm in a oh, sunroom. Oh, that's okay. So that's cool. I don't know if you can hear it. I just wanted to like, you know, let you know. A teeny but, bit, um, but it, now that I know it's rain, it sounds nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when I first started Spirit Science, I had that huge backlash from people saying, if you make money with this, with Spirit Science, you are a sellout, you're a terrible person, and how, you know, how dare you? We will shun you to the end of the earth. And this was this just huge... I guess emotional challenge for me, and I, I, what I, what happened was I basically said, okay, I'm not touching money, I'm not worrying about it, and I s struggled and suffered with debt for for years and years, and then got into really bad business-like situations, um, 
with people who didn't maybe have my best interest at heart and I would give up my power. So there was this whole, like I'd give up my authority over spirit science and say, oh, well you, you guys handle the business sort of thing. And, and that also created just like a giant mess because I kind of lost control of spirit science in general. And um, where it all kind of came to was like, it was, it was actually triggered by the ayahuasca ceremony last year uh, that set me on the path of making spirit mysteries, but actually saying like, like it's time to get a mentor. It's time to find some help for spiritual money mastery, finding some help to come to an understanding of how spiritual business can run. How can I create a very resonant community, um, a very harmonious, like, powerful like place you know an online space and maybe have a like live retreats and everything like that in the future um but in a way that also that creates this this equal exchange like people investing in themselves and changing their lives with the you know what they're they're um what they're putting in is i i want them to feel like you know whatever it is that they're investing in themselves with with anything that i offer is that they're getting like a thousand times ten thousand times more than what they paid for you know like really making this as value valuable experience for people and um still i mean there's still of course lots of people who are really you know angry about that when we when we post videos like our spiritual money series like there's still backlash in them sort of thing but i also think that it's it's kind of this like dawn of a new beginning of understanding for money like and not just not just as it relates to spirit science, but for for like spiritual entrepreneurs, like because this is this is kind of like the if you you know if we're relating it in these terms like target audience, I guess with with the money series is like my goal is that anybody out there who is on the spiritual path who has had that same struggle that I've had can maybe maybe find some inspiration in these series to help to start that ball rolling of overcoming that struggle. Like I wish I had this cartoon series when I, you know, 10 years ago, like that would have been so valuable for me to see and start to conceptualize so much earlier. Um, and I'm thinking, like my, my hopes and dreams with this is that 10 years from now in the future, that like the seeds that would have been planted from these videos would create an entire, like a new generation of spiritual entrepreneurs, of like people like you and me and, and, and all these people out in the world who really want to do something big in resonance with their heart and their purpose and like, and, and, you know, connecting humanity with nature and ourselves and making things that are really beneficial for, for, for the whole world. I would love, I, I would be amazed. I, I don't know. It was like, I, I guess my dream is that the, that this work that, you know, that, that, that we put out now and like talking about this, like having these kinds of conversations, even with you. Um, and then, you know, even when people watch your videos and they connect with that same idea is that that plants the seeds for, something really beautiful to happen in the future because if we don't talk about it then nothing you know then that information that an energy doesn't get communicated doesn't get passed around nobody's thinking about it and nothing really changes as a result of it yeah for sure i i share your passion in fact i have a my one of my youtube friends aaron dowdy we have a business we actually created called the full-time purpose that teaches spiritual people how to run an online business and it stemmed from seeing so many uh, talented people, just like really people with a lot of fire, a lot of passion. But those blocks that the 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 think the 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 belief that money is bad, or if I charge, it's going to be I'm a bad person. Uh, different blocks would keep them in the closet where no one knew them. So we want to. Our goal was like help them, like teach them the skills, but also let them know it, it's okay to do that. And now it's like if you can get these people out there making money, but also delivering their energy and their services, then they're they're helping people. So there's a lot of people I think that could be very a, a powerful catalyst for positive change that aren't doing it because of the the hang up about charging money in the spiritual niche or whatever. So I'm with you, man. I think I think that that's my goal too. Is like is just to uh, my 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 goal is to basically just live my purpose, and in doing so, I'm finding it can be a win win where I'm happy. I I can feed my kids healthy foods, and we can travel. We can live a good life, but also I'm helping a lot of people in, in a very legitimate, heart centered way. It's, it's not like we're selling snake oil or anything. It's like I'm sure your 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 school you're talking about. I'm sure it's extremely powerful. You know so. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's there's got to be a balance too in the sense of like you know getting our material existence 
harmonized with our spiritual existence because ultimately we're trying to kind of merge those things and maybe even elevate them, right? Or, or el at the very least, elevate the material to the spiritual, which is kind of like, you know, waiting for us to, to rise up a bit. Because um, like you, you talk a lot about ascension and we've, we've discussed it a little bit earlier, right? Like ascension, ascension symptoms and, and this kind of thing. And um, I, I th it's probably fair to say that even like your business and everything that you do is all on that path, right? Of like, let's get us to that higher consciousness, that higher frequency, that higher dimension, right? Yes. Yes. Everything I do is uh, is designed with that exact end of just helping raise con raise people's consciousness and help them, uh, you know, just become a better version of themselves, essentially. Mm -hmm, totally. Um, and and when you talk about like I've, some of the videos that I watched that, um, from you just earlier, you were talking about, um, you know, elevating into like going through a dimensional shift, going through, you know, from the third dimension to the fourth or the fifth dimension, right? And moving up in that way. And I really wanted to ask you, like, what does that look like to you? Like, what is that? Like, if, you know, if we were to experience it right now, like just boom, dimensional shift, what does life look like? What, what is, what is reality? How is reality experienced? How would you describe that? I think that's the show we're all here to kind of see. I, I don't know exactly. I, I feel like it's happening now. Like right now, you can let me know. Do you feel like do you you have like more synchronicity, more like little little mini divine miracles in your life than before? Would you say? Do you experience <laughs> I would, that? Like I, I would I would say so, but it's weird because I when synchronicities used to happen, it used to surprise me, and now it's like, yeah, of course, <laughs> you know, it's 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 like it's it's the synchronicities almost become mundane because there's like this stream and flow that you've just learned to ride at this point. You come to expect them, and maybe that's maybe that's actually a, a bad thing. I don't know, um, in the sense that like it's less miraculous. Um, but I don't know. I mean, does that answer your question? Yeah. No. Yeah. My my point was I I feel like like you're getting used to them. Like it's becoming your new normal, and I think we're gonna slowly be stretched and integrate these new, like, like what does 5D look like, you're asking? I feel like there's, there's more synchronicity, more people going through life as their actual authentic selves, not so much um, so influenced by their character and their ego. And then consequently, like collectively, people I think would just be much more, would get along better and just be less uh, defensive and more like a lot more um, community and working together. And just if like billions of people went through life as their authentic heart-centered selves, I think it's just going to dramatically change the way we do everything, the way we do business, the way we, we do the schooling, the way we treat the planet. So I think like over time, as we keep going in this direction, the world is going to get better and more harmonious. Um, but, but I think it's just going to keep going. I don't know what it's going to look like, quite honestly, but I can see it sort of going in that direction already now, just with, with, with a lot of people I've met, and same with you, people who are really different people, living more authentic, heart-centered lives. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems it seems like there is a bit of a distinction, though, right? Like, at least I, I am relating it a little bit with some of the videos that I watched from you uh, prior, where you're actually describing like like an entire shift from the physical dimension where our bodies are non-physical, right? And we, you know, like thoughts and feelings manifest instantly sort of thing, right? Like, like as if, you know, you're on a perpetual... Uh, Tr transcendent DMT voyage and, you know, navigating in this uh, like multi-dimensional realm sort of thing. But is that kind of how you're maybe perceiving it or thinking more of like just that our consciousness is, you know, expanding into more of like a psychic realm, like our, our consciousness is 5D, but we're still also physically here. Yeah. So my, my personal take is that what you describe will be way down the line. I, I, I would think that I would think that would take a lot of time to kind of get to that point where we could have that as our experience without freak out and like go into the psychosis. So, um, yeah. but uh, I think that's like where the humanity's evolution is heading more towards, yeah, more like living as spirits rather than so, um, so limited with like the, the 3D sort of physical laws of uh, the universe where, where you're, it's more like dream, like more fluid and more, more synchronous. Mm -hmm. more heart centered yeah. yeah and also more heart centered yeah yeah so uh, is, is this you know just speaking to that i guess and like looking at because i'm i'm very fascinated by the subject of ascension as well and so 
when I saw that you had all these videos on, I was like, ooh, I'm excited to watch them all, you know? It was like, it was great. And um, one of the things like we've been talking a lot about inside of Spirit Mysteries is, is it possible May, I mean, maybe not for the collective, the, you know, the global consciousness right now because of where global consciousness is. You know, we're, 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 there's a very wide spectrum of density of where people are at. But do you think it's possible for even a few or, or a small minority of people who are those light workers, those light warriors, those people who are on that path to really go and do the work to get to the point where they could experience potentially this ascension and that could catalyze a shift for everybody and i mean this is it's a crazy conversation and part of it was initially spurned from an ayahuasca journey where i saw uh basically levitation like people flying and and it was just sort of like i mean this is is this a metaphor is this a vision of the future is this a you know like many questions about what what you know that could have meant but one of the thoughts that i was left with was like what if we could learn to do that even in small groups you know like it, it or a small or you know and if, if, if even one person could master the gravitational field of their body, you know, or the electromagnetic field around their body and, and uh, you know, like do like water bending or earth bending from like airbender. I don't know if you're familiar with that uh, material. Yeah. Like if, you know, if one person could learn how to do something like that, they could, comp I mean, that would completely catalyze the entire world. They would get the entire world's attention probably the whole world would go insane for a little while, but I think that would also facilitate a massive movement and a push in that direction. But the question is, is like, is that just this outlandish wishful thinking sort of thing, you know, based on, you know, like the biblical stories and, you know, stories of ancient, you know, deities and avatars and things like that. Um, or do you think that's really possible? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. It's, it's uh, I, I definitely think it's possible. Uh, it, it reminds me of Roger Bannister. He's the, the guy who first ran the four minute mile. And before that, even doctors were saying, oh, it's physically impossible. No one can do that. And then once he did it, then like the next year, like a, a few dozen people did it. And it was this whole uh, ripple effect because people saw, oh, it's not impossible. So I believe there's a lot of like uh, light worker type people that, that, get, that are excited and, and passionate about the very thing you said, really just seeing what are the limitations of my consciousness and what I can do in this physical reality. And there will be people, I think, that stretch the boundaries in a very mind blowing way. And I, I can see that really creating like the hundredth monkey effect, maybe not with everybody, but making it much more accessible to other people where it becomes easier to, to run the four minute mile, proverbially, you know, metaphorically speaking. So yeah, I, I would, I, though at the rate we seem to be evolving, you know, human beings, I, I, it's almost impossible for me to predict what, where the limits even are in the next 15, 20, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's, 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 it's very, uh, fascinating to even ponder yeah, yeah. but uh, you know and i love i love that you brought up the four middle minute mile i haven't thought about that for a long time but that's a really good point and uh it's just like when i mean the biggest thing i think that i can take away in this moment at least from from the story of the four minute mile is that he was trying you know he was actually trying to write it wasn't just talk he wasn't just like oh i can do the thing you know it's he, he like he was uh wh what was his name again sorry? sorry i think it was roger bannister roger bannister so like he was out there on the track running of you know as as fast as he can over and over until he did it and the moment he did it right it just blew minds everywhere and suddenly it was possible like as you described so Maybe this is a similar thing with these sort of, uh, you know, super normal abilities, if you will, or, or however you want to describe them. You know, it's like walking on water or, you know, any of the Jesus miracles, right? Like Jesus, the passages uh, that are, you know, left by behind that, you know, are, are attributed to him or things that he, you know, it's, that he, he is said to have said uh, is, is like everything that I'm doing, you can do and greater, you know, like, like. So if he walked on water and if he, you know, could, you know, could turn water into wine or what have you, um, why not? Couldn't any of us figure that out? And the, the question then becomes, it's like, well, are we actually trying, right? Because in the, for the most part, it seems like, you know, humanity is very split um, between like the, the, there's a, you know, a lot of religious people who believe very definitively, you know, for example, I'm not trying to like put anybody in a box, but there is a large group of, you know, very orthodox Christians who say that Jesus is going to come and save them. But, you know, they, it's not like it's 
part of their journey to reach that messiahhood level kind of thing that that like christ consciousness kind of level um and, and christ consciousness is blasphemy as an idea you know like to to a lot of people and then on the other side there's like well but science says that you know physics you know definitively says gravity is going to keep us down forever and like then there's that right and it's like as long as you're believing that or you're believing that or whatever your beliefs are that that seems to be really dictating the course of your life and whatever and whatever way that you end up going right so the question is like who's who's actually trying to ascend who's trying to you know to do these kinds of these th kinds of things and like and where do you even start like for me i'm kind of like lots of plant medicine i guess like meditation plant medicine breath work and and like learning like just like lots of reading like <laughs> it seems to be my mindset but i mean wh what do you think about that like what what would your formula be to actually go about that yeah so my formula would be, it's almost like, I'm reading this book right now. What's it called? It's called The Surrender Experiment by uh, the, the same guy who wrote The Untethered Soul. I can't think of his, Don, I can't think of his name right now. Real, real popular book. And for the longest time that the uh, the author was like a, a very devout like meditator. He would meditate like all day. You know, he, he was one of those people that sort of had the awareness that, huh, there's this thinker, there's these thoughts, and then there's me. So he became like obsessed with that idea, the whole enlightenment sort of pursuit, you know? And, but, but eventually after like years and years of doing that and really getting deep with his meditation, he eventually found like he was inspired to go out there in life and start doing all these things. And these intuitions were saying, oh, start this retreat center, do this, do this. So, and he he said that he was a, he felt like he was growing more spiritually, becoming closer to that sort of enlightened state more by letting spirit sort of just take him where it wanted to, just through his own intuition and excitement. So, so on one hand, you might I I feel like uh, on one hand the approach you're saying, if it's within your actual excitement, if that's fun for you, great. But I also think a lot of spiritual growth that would allow for those abilities, to kind of maybe naturally, to sort of happen for a person, could come from just sort of walking the the guided path by your own spirit in a sort of like practical way, but maybe leading to experiences that create these awakenings and, and raising your vibration to where these abilities sort of come on board. So I feel like, uh, so, so my, my, my thing is I just try to follow my excitement. And I feel like that's my future self calling me through that vibration of excitement. And sometimes it's like, I need to freaking meditate more. I need to do these things. And other times it's like, I need to start a business. And both of which I think bring me closer to that more higher states of awareness where those abilities probably exist. Does that mean does that make sense? What I said, any of that? I feel like yeah, definitely. Went off there. I mean, and okay. we brought we brought it back to life purpose as well here, right? Like of, I mean, following your bliss, following your passion, your purpose, what it is that you're you're feeling like you're the most compelled to do is just sounds like exactly right. Like if you like, you know, if if, if you know, if someone's listening to this and hears the, uh, you know, the, the conversation of Ascension and they're like, that's for me, you know, like then that enthusiasm is going to carry them on that path of learning about it and, and, and practicing some things or whatever, you know, like whatever their heart is compelling them onto that journey. And then otherwise, uh, if someone's like, no, but I'm more compelled to, you know, like do this or to do that, like that's, that's perfect. And that's beautiful because we all have different paths. And, and I don't, yeah, as you're describing, like, I don't, think it's it's right for someone who's you know well it's, it's not right to try and force it to, you know to try and do yeah like do something that is not in your highest calling to do so i think that's really really well said and that really fits in well with like what you do and your story yeah and it seems like you genuinely do have that excitement about trying to do it in the way you describe so for you that approach i think is in alignment because it's just that's something i can just tell it's like it's freaking exciting, right? Yeah, I'm so it's I'm like they, it's all it's all valid, yeah. <laughs> well, I you know, and it's it's funny too because there is that surrender in the sense that um like I don't want to live my life in the sense of saying like oh it needs to happen or it um, has to happen or something. It's sort of like, well, you know, it's entirely really within the realm of God if this is like what's really, you know, I'm just at the very least compelled to elevate, you know, my consciousness and if this is a part of that journey, you know, based on those, the visions that I've had and everything like that and, and the work uh, that I've done, then perfect. And and if not, great. And if someone else, like, look, because I'm very busy with a lot of different things too, like just all the time, uh, that 
if someone else had more time to devote on the spiritual path and figured it out, and then they were like flying around telling everybody, you can fly, I'd be like the first person at their door being like, teach me. You know, like, that sounds like, it sounds like really fun. Um, and actually, just speaking to life purpose, actually a little bit, uh, jumping away from the subject of ascension for a moment, one of the, la like, the last videos that I watched from you was uh, talking about, it was like uh, coronavirus had just started, it was a few months ago, and you had mentioned that you were suddenly compelled to write a book. Um, and that was sort of taking you out of your comfort zone, you know, it was like a, such a, sh a sudden shift and whatnot. And you had mentioned it a little bit on this on this call. And I, I, um, I wanted to ask you, like, what's the book about? And are you writing it? And how's that going? Yeah, it's, it's basically similar content to my YouTube stuff. So my first book right now, it's about, uh, it, it, I haven't decided on the number, but I, it's, right now it's like 12 signs you're going through a spiritual awakening and five things you should know if you are. So it's like a book for my younger self. Um, and it's basically just about that, just helping. I want it to fall into the hands of people um, that already probably suspect there is a spiritual th transformation going on with them, but they haven't had anyone to reinforce it or encourage it. And consequently, that can lead to a lot of uh, stress and a lot of ignoring of their intuition. So my, my purpose of my book is to help people really just say, okay, it is real. And okay, I can follow my intuition. And it, okay, it is going to be awesome. It's going to be okay. Just to give them the, sort of the permission to really just listen to themselves and listen to their heart and let that take them on the wild path that's sort of destined for them. Um, so that's kind of the basis of the book. And the reason for pulling back, I think, is to become less on the computer, less attached to like the online presence. I want to really, I really don't want to be known. I really want to be like, the quiet guy who writes books and but yet impacts people because I have a lot of passion. So I want to sort of transition from not being so out there and, and like the internet cosmos in a way. Definitely. Um, are you familiar with um, either the books Iron John or uh, The Women Who Run With Wolves? The the first one, I, I have Iron John. It was a recommendation. I haven't read it yet, though. So sort of. <laughs> okay. You know, the reason I ask is because one of the things you mentioned in your, you know, just, just now talking about your book is like that, you know, really engaging with the wild self, you know, and uh, getting away from the, this world and into a little bit more nature world, you know, and, and, and I think that's beautiful. And like those books were really impactful for me because they were really about that connecting with that inner that wildness that is kind of lost in the world. Um, but maybe, I mean, do you want to speak a little bit more about that? Like, you know, what does that mean to you? The, like, what is the wild self and, and, and why is it important? Yeah, well, I feel like we live in a world that's so ridiculously distracting. And there's, like you said, there's so many things um, that are, that become the focus of our intention. And it's very easy to get ungrounded and sort of severed off from like, like just like that simple, quiet, the, the true self in a sense. And a lot of times I think life can be so simple and harmonious and enjoyable when we just sort of let that, that inner self sort of help nudge us through life. But there's so many things going on that it's like a, it takes a real act of will to like tune things out. So, um, so for me, like, yeah, sort of reclusing from all the things that would sort of suck my attention out of me has been necessary for me to kind of just come back into alignment with like my true self and just and have that have actual inner peace and trust and like like joy in my life um but so i don't know the book reference is is the wild self like sort of a just a way of it saying like the real self or do you mean like the passion itself i guess so i don't know if i, I even mean, answered your question <laughs> yeah no it can kind of be all of the above and i mean both of these books like iron john is like the the divine masculine wild man and then with the women who run with wolves is the divine feminine wild woman kind of, you know, so you, you kind of got both. And I do recommend just for anybody listening to like, you know, reading both of them, not just if you're a man or a woman, because they, they both carry a strong resonance. Um, but they, they, they really do relate with like, yeah, like connecting both with intuition, freeing yourself from like the structures, the, the, the rigidity of like ways of thinking and kind of partnering yourself with that inner yeah just like you, that more intrinsic natural wild free uh state of being and uh, like like recognizing where you're con like confined by 
the societal structures and limitations of the world around you. And it's, they're really beautiful because they also use mythology, like various myths and, and legends and stuff to tell these stories. And, and I think that that's another thing that I, it has really been impactful for me just in this last year is connecting with stories as teaching tools and lessons and ways of learning. Because we, we have such a, I mean, you know, with Hollywood and the media and everything, or not, maybe not like, but like entertainment media, um, there's a lot of stories that are conveyed, but the, the learning lessons are not always there, right? Or, or they're not broken down. They're left for people to just sort of discern it for themselves. And most people are, they watch the movie and then they go, wow, that was great. And then they're on to the next thing, whatever it is. Um, but so what these books do is they, they, they like break down piece by piece these little these myths and these stories and why they're so significant and that really helps in like I think identifying the inner psyche like giving you a frame of reference for yeah for like for 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 connecting with life and your 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 uh, almost a map of your own inner consciousness in a way that is I you know I I don't know I, there's not a lot of that 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 gets around I think in in the masses so that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think a lot of what we're seeing is like um, a lot of the content put out there in your form of like movies and television, like and TikTok and stuff like that. It's meant to just be very just stimulating. So it's very stimulating, but it's not, it doesn't really, uh, it's not conducive to what we're talking about here, really like finding yourself or really understanding like a potentially life-changing concept or, or lesson inherent in a story. It's meant to kind of like, you know, just sort of, it, it, it can be like a, like a high, it can be sort of a yeah, stimulating and, and fun in a sense, but not, not really deeply fulfilling or satisfying, like sort of the getting back to the wild side. For sure. I, I mean, I, I, this is very, you, you'll probably find this very interesting. Um, we started a series recently called Hidden Spirituality, which is, you know, just like looking at the hidden spiritual symbolism in movies and, and shows and games and like trying to kind of like take that, what you're describing, that stimulating rush and like bring that vibration deeper and into someone's to like explore on a deeper level. Um, and my personal experience when I started that was that my experience of watching movies and entertainment in general completely transformed because I was looking at it with this eye of like looking for something, look like watching for like, are there symbols in this, you know, like, and it completely changed the game. Like my, my, my movie watching show watching experience now is, has never been the same ever since. Like that was a game changer. Uh, do you, have you ever done that or, or have you ever had an experience like that? Sort of, yeah. So I guess what I said previously could make one assume that, oh, he, he's against movies and TV. I actually love watching movies a lot. And it's funny because a lot of like, and I, I agree, there's a lot of lessons in, in movies. Even like I watch, I have kids, so I watch a lot of kids' movies and I like the Marvel movies. Um, and I'm always getting like good uh, like email ideas, like brought, like newsletter type ideas, like content ideas from just from watching these random movies. So I think if you look at them with sort of a watchful eye, they're even in today's modern sort of movies, they're still... There's a lot of gems of wisdom in there if you if you look deep enough, and I think it's cool that you would you would you would take that and like and, and sort of like organize it for other people to kind of enjoy as well. That's, that's a really cool idea. Yeah, definitely. What did you think of uh, of Doctor Strange? I liked that. I saw that one time a while ago, and at the time I wasn't paying attention that much. But yeah, I can see why you <laughs> I can see why you dig it based on our talk so far. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's very up up our alley. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to ask because you mentioned that you like Marvel movies, but like that one was, I remember watching it. I was like doing some like mudra the entire time as I was watching it being like, this is so intense just because, you know, it's like taking astral projection and chakras and energy and like putting that into mainstream, you know, like putting that into the masses, the, the, the mindset of the masses. And I know for a lot of people, it's like, oh, that's just a movie. But you know, I think it's still planting those seeds. Yes, I agree. And it's also making that sort of that sort of thing seem cool and attractive. Like imagine if spirituality and like learning to like balance your chakras became like hip, that we'd see a very different world. So I, I, I love that movie as well for that. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, uh, we, we, there's another, um, there's another video that we're working on right now that was, it's called like, what happens when we find a chakra? 
And it's this idea of like, I mean, what if scientists, you know, because right now in the, in the mainstream science community is like chakras, there's nonsense, there's, there's no basis in it. But like, what happens if we actually found one? And like, you know, had some fancy technology that could detect a chakra, like what kind of domino effect would that create of like, oh, well, chakras are real, then astral projection is real, and auras are real, and channeling is real, and aliens... In, and the, the psychedelics that you see, or the aliens that you see on psychedelics and all this is like, they're actually, it would just create this massive domino effect and shift of humanity in general, in mass, like looking at just spirituality completely different. Like that's, and that would really be kind of, I think all it takes. Um, I don't know, do you think that could happen? For, for sure, and I think we're living in a time where we're gonna probably see a lot of that. At least I speculate, we'll see a lot of um, discoveries that challenge the, the the mass beliefs about what's possible in reality. And I think these discovering a chakra or like having some kind of legitimate, you know, believable um, evidence that UFOs exist, which imply there's other <laughs> ETs exist. You know, and a lot of, there's a lot of, I think, a lot of different things that a lot of us intuitively sort of, sort of sense are real, that if they were to come to light in a way or in a scientific way where, even your most skeptical-minded person would sort of have to believe it without being completely in denial. Um, I can see that having just a massive positive, like an awakening type of effect on on people. Yeah, so I, I yeah. yeah. No, no, sorry, please. No, that was it, that was it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, man. I, it, I Ultimately, I think like the basis of just at the very least, this call so far, I'm just, it's really getting me a little bit more excited uh, if anything, too, for, for all of this, these changes. Because, you know, as, as we kind of talked about at the beginning with this dark night of the soul, I mean, we're going through some crazy stuff right now. And, uh, you know, my even my friend Jerry, uh, the founder of Rhythmia, was speaking about how this was going to be like the decade of the shift. But it didn't necessarily mean that this was going to be, you know, a smooth transition, right? It's probably going to be fairly messy as people wake up to a higher consciousness, as people like step into you know having maybe a more psychic awareness of each other right like intuitive you know, energetic connection um that has the potential to be a very intense thing for everybody and i know that for for myself i've been very focused on um just like my work and what i'm about and my you know everything like that because there's so much information to take in sometimes i have to keep myself in a little bit of a bubble to get all my stuff done but just like connecting with you about all this is a like, it's it's pretty exciting actually like just to watch and bear witness to everything that's going on yeah 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 i think right now like you said like, I, I like jerry too I, i've been to read me a few times he's a good guy but uh yeah i feel like it's easy to like see like all the challenging things that are happening but all the stuff we're talking about i really believe are like the other side of the coin for all the stuff that's happening in the world it's like as all this stuff sort of gets purged and brought to light collectively speaking i think what's gonna happen is just a lot of the stuff we're talking about, new discoveries, new functions within our consciousness we wake up and realize we have. And just like a like a spiritual renaissance I can see being like a like, you know, being the res eventual result of what we're seeing and probably happening sort of simultaneously actually. But yeah, I'm psyched up too, man. <laughs> it's so good. So, um, Victor, this has been an absolutely fabulous call and um you know, for anybody who's out there watching and like just wanting to tune in to you and your work, uh, where can they go to find you? The easiest places would be on YouTube or Instagram. Just type in my name, Victor Odo, O-D-D-O, -D -D -O, and you'll see me on those uh, channels there. Awesome. And you have a website too with lots of courses, right? Yeah, awakeninghelp.com. Awakeninghelp.com. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Well, um, before we wrap this thing up, do you have any like... Um, final thoughts anything you would love, love to share with uh, everyone listening or anything like that um no I, I just honestly want to thank you Jordan I you know I've, I've written some articles for the spirit science blog and uh, it's it's a real honor to get to know you you're a cool dude man I feel like if you ever came to Sedona or I would I would really enjoy hanging out I feel like we got along nicely and and you were able to kind of get me excited about this stuff as well and it was just real real fun. And I feel blessed to have had the conversation, and I wish you well with all your do all you're doing, man. You're you're a, you're a, you're a solid person. You're a cool guy. So thank you. <laughs> you're too sweet, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, this was great, brother. Be blessed, everyone listening. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Spirit Science Live.